So I want to thank you. With me, I will be very brief. And I'm happy our captain, our chair, said that uh, we must as workers be involved in all political activities and campaigns. And if there are any other formations of any committees, these workers should be part and parcel of those arrangements. Unajua siku hizi maneno yamebadilika kidogo. Mi am Kanu you know very well. Sisi wakati wa Kanu tulikuwa tunaenda kwa moyo ukienda usubui anasema ah na tuwe umetembea na mna gani wapi hata ka briefcase. Tena tunakutana na wengine wa fulani wa Msamia nao wanatoka huko tena na briefcase. Tulikuwa tunakutana hivyo. So <laughs> campaign za siku hizi zilibadilika na zilibadilishwa na our third president Mwai Kibaki uh, and some people call me you are a member of deep state there is nothing like deep state and uh, the honorable prime minister is here I can hardly move from my place in Kajado and meet president Uhuru Kenyatta at will or as I wish it's not easy but as I told you in our meeting it's a commitment is a commitment to make sure in whose hands are you people going to be is a total commitment as a person whose mandate stems from a pressure group to pressurize for a change a change that is positive change that is relevant change that can protect working men and women in this country that is why i am fighting i've been fighting as a person, as a tool, to make sure before you join me, to make sure that we are understood. And I started in 2014. Because you people, as from responsible trade union movement, you must be aware that who, who is coming to manage your economic affairs of your country. Will we be able to put up or put in some mechanism that can allow our economy to grow or to spur economic growth and hence employ more people in brief terms and conditions of service of our members. When I look around, there is no other person other than His Excellency Raila Amolo Oding. And I want to thank Sister Rosa Hakusema if Maybe my, in my speech there is nothing like if. I am a bad loser. There is nothing like losing. I don't lose. And I don't join any persuasions that is going to lose. I hate being weak. Nobody wants to be associated with a weak person. We are willing. We are willing. We are willing. Na tukishinda. Baba atatusaidia hii kitu inaitwa SRC. <laughs> SRC when we welcome it it was an advisory role. Now it has sent that itself in management of industrial relations practice within public service unions. Hindrance. And the law convention number 87 and number 98 it gives you freedom of free collective bargaining as enshrined in Article 41 of our Constitution on CBS. No hindrance in between. And we are angered at the International Labor Organization where I serve as an ILO governing board member. So the SRC is an illegal, amorphous an organization if it's not operating on an advisory role. So it's supposed to stop any CBA that has been mutually entered into between the parties. Yes. 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 And I think I know uh, uh, our incoming president will look at it from that perspective. The other, the, the other area is strengthening of social tripartism workers, employers, and government. And I know we'll do that. To narrow the gap. Abana Kama will leave you to leave your sasa where the minister can sit and his group, they organize their own people for Geneva without involving employers and workers. 
And I think somebody should be able to tell them, but since we have only two to three months for our incoming president to come and make uh, uh, changes that would be favorable to working men and women in this country, we can put up with that. And the other area in the memorandum is uh, in the constitution we are reflected somewhere that workers were on a core nominated Katika Bunge. Now we don't want to go, Your Excellency, to through political parties. We need to have our own constituency so that these people meet and say, Welcome, Madam Governor Charity Ngilu. We need to have our own constituency where we will be able to nominate your own representatives to parliament. Not through political parties. Not through my Kanu political party or another political party. Or Wangara's ODM. Your Excellency, Nataka Kukuacha, Tumeuliza, Sote Tumepata Pabu Jua COVID. And we lost a lot of people, including the chairman of my union. We all suffered. Hata sasa nilikuwa nikasirike juu ya mambo ya petrol lining up. But I have been told by my treasurer who has received information from Canada and US right now. Even there, there is a problem people are lining for petrol. In Canada right now. So this is a universal problem may be caused by, though others may be holding, expecting prices to go up, but they should ease this problem of petrol so that uh, we don't line up for petrol in this country. Mambo ya NSSF na NHIF. Your Excellency, we know people who took money from NHIF. They are working scot-free. And it is obvious. The government made budget allocation of 6 billion Kenya shillings kwenda kwa NHIF to serve our police officers, to cover that is why we are eagerly waiting for you with your baba care that will be different from what is happening at NHIF now. Na hiyo pesa ikachukuliwa na wale waliochukua wanajulikana na ndiyo hawa nasema sana mambo ya corruption and what 6 billion went into the hands of people at NHIF, National Hospital Insurance Fund. And as I said, to may appoint the lady you have heard here, Rosa Mamu, the Minister Chalugui, the Permanent Secretary Engineer Chumo, and other four people in the system have refused to Gazeta. We have gone to court, we have adulted the, the business of the NSSF. Simply because we are the same as no explanation. And that is workers' money which is 120 billion. I was on that board, no single cent got lost. They want weak representation on the board so that they can get away with this 120 billion shillings. These workers will not accept that. Lastly, I know the other things you will be able to read. Utajua kila kitu ambacho sisi tunataka, tunetengenezo membranda muyotu, we will hand it over to you at appropriate time. But I can assure you, as I said in 2014, that William Samuel Ruto will not be the president. I have repeated on special occasions, including on the media and what have you. That still links into my mind. And to me, that is the way. And you are going to get there, and we are going to get there, all of us, to Kimachi na Opa Moja. Please, it is our sincere request that let these people, workers of this country, the Republic of Kenya, be in the center of your system and your government so that they will be able, as your soldiers, to protect you, Your Excellency. Lastly, we welcome the ILO Convention 190, which gives us a fair approach on both sexes, both men and women, to limit the gender harassment 
and violent violence against our own men and women. If that one is ratified by Kenya government, we would have completed our journey towards our sisters and brothers who are harassed on daily basis at our, from their various places of work up to the house. It is pathetic in this country that people, whatever you want, you must go to things that uh, lead you to Ruto's economy of bottom-up. Who wants to see somebody's bottom down? So these are some of the things that this ILO convention addresses. May I take this opportunity with a lot of humility and very humble to invite the incoming fifth president of the Republic of Kenya, the right Honorable Raila Amolodin. His daughter, he has information of all of us and history. You are welcome, sir. As I understand, he may be seated. What uh, I did really not say is, he didn't say, change his son. <laughs> so, Mr. Secretary General, Viongozi wa Fanyikazi Wote, Ambo Mifika Pasikia Leo, Hamjambo. Kabla siya sema chochote, Kule nabijua niku hapa na watu mbao mikuja na mimi. Nataka wa salimu njini tu kidogo. Alawo mimi ntasema yali machachi niku nae. Sawa. Ntaanza kwanza na mwenye kiti wa campaign secretariat ya azimio. Gavana wa laikipia. Ndirizu umuridhi. Thank you. Lafa da foto na professor nyanyo. Asante sana. Um, the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, the second Prime Minister of the Republic, and without doubt, the fifth President of the Republic. <laughs> My colleague, uh, Governor Nyang Nyong, uh, Dr. Francis Atuoli, Professor Makao Viongozi wa Labour Movement, Amujambu. Amujambu Tena. Soba. Ezerian Pugin. Ezokona. Karam. Akam. Mureazeo. Mureazeo Enge. Muga. Mujipigi ya Makofi na ona wa Kenya wate muko hapa. Your Excellency, I will only make Two points, I think. One is to recognize the amazing role of the more labor movement around the world. And uh, I'm glad, as Nadome said, that you, as a labor movement, have taken a view about the future of your country. And that is the way, really, in many countries across Europe and elsewhere, Manake, the labor movement, as you point out, two and a half million Kenyans, I think when you uh, stand to speak, all of Kenya listens, and I congratulate you for having made the right choice. Mujipigia Makovi. And it is not just in uh, driving uh, politics, it is in driving policy. It is in driving policy. Because we say, uh, I think, it is a colleague of Professor Anyang Nyong who teaches political science at Yale who said that politics without policy is empty. It is rhetoric. And I think when you look in the country, that's what you are seeing. Uh, our colleagues engage in a lot of political rhetoric. But we as Azimio, we are interested in politics with policy inside it. And because the SG mentioned the ILO, 
if you are a student of history, you will have known this report from 1972 by the ILO about the Kenyan economy that dealt with wages, incomes, and inequality. And the reason they were doing it is because the economy was growing, but it was not creating enough jobs, even as it was growing. And they called it jobless growth. Now, we, as Azimio, we want together to build an economy that is creating jobs, and not just any jobs, meaningful jobs for all Kenyans, well-paying jobs for all Kenyans, jobs based on technology and jobs that are looking to the future. So we are really pleased to have the opportunity to come and say jumbo and to thank you for declaring your support for the fifth president of the republic, Raila Amolo Odinga. So, as to what uh, my neighbor <laughs> asked about your involvement in the campaign, I welcome it. And uh, I think after uh, uh, Mkubwa speaks, we shall sit to agree na kupanga so that we campaign in every corner of the republic and make sure that we elect the fifth president of the republic. And now allow me to invite my colleague, Governor of Kisumu, Professor Anyang Yong. Karibu sana. Asante sana mwenye kiti. Wa azimio la umoja. Asante sana kiongozi wetu mheshimiwa Raila Molo Dinga the fifth na Francis Atuli brother zetu who has led the trade union movement in this country with the eagerness and strength it deserves asante ni sana i just want to say one thing maybe two one that we appreciate and recognize the role that the labor movement in this, in this country has played in the development of this country and to begin with in the achievement of independence of this nation. Had it not been for people like Mark and Singh and T.J. Mboya who are known unionists who combined with the other nationalists, Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga and Jomo Kinyata, we would not be here today as an independent nation. One of the reasons why they did this was because they laid primacy on the unity of Kenyans to achieve independence. Marx once told workers of the world, workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. I would tell Kenyans today, Kenyans of today unite. You have nothing to lose but, but your disunity. The Prime Minister has laid one important emphasis on national unity. Why is national unity so important in Kenya today? Because we know that rule of divide and rule is what has taken us behind in our development from independence to today. The game of divide and rule in Africa is what has kept Africa behind by the imperialists from independence to today. And the Prime Minister lived through this and he knows that if we do not unite, may we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty cannot be found within our borders. And workers are the productive class. Brother Tuli, thank you so much for uniting these people because they are the productive class of this nation. And we need you. <laughs> having that quality and having that experience, we need you to support the fifth in bringing, bringing the third liberation of this nation. That is economic liberation, of which you are the centerpiece. I'm a civil. If we don't plan to unite, we will plan to fail. Those who do not plan to develop, plan to fail. And therefore today, as a former Minister for Planning and National Development, I want to call upon you. Let us plan to succeed 
by supporting the fifth in bringing to this nation the third liberation, which is the economic liberation of Kenyans as a whole. Bila ubaguzi wala ukabila. Sawa sawa? Inawezekana? Asante ni sana. Let me take this opportunity, therefore, to invite my party leader, the Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Makofi kwa ke. Ah, yeah. Now he's inviting me, yes, I'm the one who invited him. <laughs> because he talks to you guys. <laughs> but then, I you know, uh, this meeting should have taken place earlier. Uh, my brother, my Shemeji, Francis Atuli, had invited me uh, about two months ago. But because of other commitments, you have kept on postponing, postponing, until last week he said, this one is now cast in stone. Tuesday, the 12th, he must come to talk to the workers. And today we are here. Asandini Sana. So, Anasuelo Semati, Hayawi, Hayawi. Hayawi, Hayawi. Hua. And I'm happy to hear, listen to workers, representatives, and their concerns. Pro professor has told you about the role that the union has played in, in the history of this country. We were there, we were young boys, in that period of time, when you had uh, the KFL at that time, Tom Boyer, as the Secretary General. You have got the worker, Doc Workers Union in Mombasa. Then Dennis Akum. You had uh, the Railway Workers Union. All those other unions here, which were very key in agitating for independence of this country. But what happened here was not unique. It happened also in other countries. In Tanganyika, in Ghana, then Gold Coast, in Nigeria, all over Africa. The trade union movement were the pioneers in the struggle for independence of, our, of Africa. So trade unions are therefore very, very key. And post-independence also the trade union has played also a very important role up to day where we are today. But then it is Global, all over the place, you go to Britain, you'll see the role that the Trade Union Congress has played, United States, and so on. Peter has told you about what Karl Marx said, that workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. This is important, that you unite because otherwise you will be chained permanently. This is because the society here was evolving from um, a pre-industrial society, which was basically feudal, to industrial revolution that came, and formal employment then came with it. Now you had got the aristocrats who were owning the means of production and themselves, therefore, determining how much a worker was going to be paid. There was a lot of exploitation of the working class in that period of time until the unions grew up, came up, and people and were able to agitate for better conditions of employment and living. So this is a historical process that has taken place Cross board up to where we are today. And now we now have a formal structure. You've got a tripartite arrangement. You've got the workers. You've got then the government. And then you've got the employers. There. A, a formal arrangement how you, in, in, you engage and how you negotiate. 
so that you don't have a situation where there's too much exploitation. Companies are reporting big, big profits, billions and billions of shillings, yet they are grumbling about paying peanuts to workers. This is something that should not be happening. But most of the times, the, the, those who own the companies, who own shares, would like to maximize their profits. And that's why it is important to have a, a union that will ensure also that workers don't lose out in this. <laughs> but what kind of society do you want to create? When we were when they were fighting for independence, you remember very well, they were saying that we want Mzungu to leave, Mafrika take over, so that we can be able to confront three major enemies of our people. Ignorance, poverty, and disease. Those are the enemies which were identified at that time. Uh, Ugonjwa, Ojinga, no maskini. But then where are we today? 58 years down the road, those major enemies are still just there. They're still there. Some of them have even grown stronger in terms of poverty. We have done something about literacy, but not where we should be. But poverty is still there in our country today. So how do you deal with this? You must create a society and conditions that will enable our people to create wealth. This is very important. You see, in our, our, our national anthem, the first stanza says, God bless this land of ours. Just be our shield and defender. We are dwell in in, 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 in unity, peace and liberty, plenty be found within our borders. Final, plenty be found within our borders. That plenty was not going to drop like manna from heaven. It was going to be created through the, the, the sweat and toil of the people of Kenya. So we must create a conditions through which people of Kenya can create that wealth. Enable the people of Kenya to create that wealth. How do you do it? Empower them. For through education, see, then after that education, conditions of employment where they can be able to create wealth. Create wealth. This is what has been missing. This is where we have failed. And this is where we want now to run with uh, supersonic speed. To create conditions, first we talked about education and we've said that every child born in our country will get an opportunity for, to acquire quality education from nursery, primary, secondary, tertiary, up to, secretary, up to university education. And when they finish their education, they're qualified, they should be able to access jobs. The jobs where they can be able to earn proper decent salaries, to enable them to uh, have upward social mobility, to change their socioeconomic status, and also be able to support their parents. This is very important. And those who want to do business should also have an opportunity to access capital that they can be given to start up their own businesses and have an opportunity to grow those businesses so that instead of becoming employers, they can become, uh, I mean, employees, they can become employers. This is a, a, another thing that is important. But then, in terms of health, we are talking about creating a condition where people can be able to access uh, health services when they are sick. You are talking about availability 
accessibility and affordability the people that where you come up with what you call baba care baba care so in terms of employment you need to to to, to give people opportunities in other words you allow the private sector to grow private sector must be able to grow so that it can create more employment because people in terms of looking at public sector public sector to see see atuna permanent secretaries see see atuna ambassadors to see atuna my directors the parastatos na kadalika i tell them public sector employment is so limited every i mean um that the entire public service that is all civil servants the police the military the county government employ a total of about 700,000 people 700,000 people are the one that the public sector is employing and those positions are not vacant they are all occupied because is uno ka when somebody dies or somebody retires and that is about 10% of the total out of 700,000 70,000 per annum but every year we churn into the labor market, labor market about 1 million people those living schools at primary at secondary at colleges at universities about 1 million people if those people were chasing 70,000 jobs where would they be so the solution is to ensure that the private sector grows and creates more employment this is the most important thing so that's why we must encourage the private sector and remove all the impediments that are making it difficult for private sector to grow things like infrastructure you guys don't know the infrastructure is a major impediment to investment in this country a unit of electricity costs 14 cents us cents here in kenya in egypt it is 3 cents so most of the uh, uh, manufacturers will migrate to egypt and go and manufacture in egypt and export back to kenya you are exporting jobs to egypt you are exporting jobs to china if and all these goods from china coming to your market here in my other area in connection i was an entrepreneur in the industrial area i've been a worker i've been an entrepreneur in this area i was very busy those factories employing 500 1000 people today it's a distressing sight they have become warehouses for manufacturing to warehousing basically storing containers carrying goods from china so we exported our labor to china we need to change this here and not only retain those but to create more employment here in our country this is very very important then you look you go to uh, singapore somebody leaves a university or leaves a college or whatever it is house has been trained they have got skills you are employed the moment you are employed that letter of employment alone is enough guarantee for you to get a house you just take it to the housing department that letter of employment is enough for you you'll be able to get a house a two bedroom house if you are you're a bachelor if you you're married you get a three bedroom house and you live there if you live in a two bedroom house you when you get married you can go back through the same scheme and get a bigger house just that letter of employment alone is sufficient why the boss of the what they have done is to build more housing 
Because that is how you, you move your people to the middle, to the, the middle, middle income status. The middle class is growing. So affordable housing is very, very important. And this is housing for workers. Not those who can afford to buy, those who earn more, will go to the other, other schemes where they buy houses for leisure and so on and so forth. But basic housing, affordable housing, and this is something that was not properly understood when the Jubilee government wanted to introduce it. A housing levy. That housing levy is actually meant for workers, for the low-income people. That's why it's called low-income housing. And if you do that, you'll be able to actually create more wealth down there and, move, uh, and, in, and change the status of the, the workers down there. So this is something that actually should have been promoted by the trade union. Court is the one who should be leading this process. I have a discussion with my brother there and this is a now a work in progress is an issue that we should uh, we needed yesterday. When you get there, we'll roll it out with the concurrence of court and we'll ensure that you are members are the major beneficiaries of that scheme. <laughs> we will uh, uh, ensure, of course, uh, Madam talked about um, a zero tolerance to, to harassment, not only on women, but on oh, men. <laughs> that goes without the other question. Zero tolerance to any form of harassment or any form of violence against any Kenyan citizen. <laughs> you know that violence at work has been prevalent a lot. And this is something that we really want to bring to an end. And also gender-based violence is also being on the increase in our country. Something that we cannot tolerate. And you have situations where when women go to report violence against them at the police station, the police are just laughing at them. Yeah. Those kind of things we must change. And we will digitize crime reporting so that women do not have to go to a police station to be harassed by men there. Okay. We will, uh, um, uh, of course, the issue of representation on the board of N uh, NSSF. That is, it should be automatic, because that is workers' money. <laughs> you don't have to negotiate with anybody. That is a workers' right. The workers have got a right to go and they be there to ensure that their money is not misused or misappropriated by people who have no interest of workers at heart. <laughs> so there are Issues that we sit down and discuss with workers. Because workers are the wealth creators. That's where wealth is, cre is created. That's where the rubber meets the road. See you. So we will basically, it will be a, 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 a relationship of constant dialogue and engagement. Because what, what we really want to do is to achieve the Kenyan, achieve the Kenyan dream which I have mentioned to you. The Kenyan dream is in our national anthem. A prosperous country. Plenty is found within our borders. In the Bible, the country where the plenty is found is called? Is called? Is called? Sura Yala Janasema. That's the, that's the canon I said I was going to take the people to. Because it's there that plenty be found within our borders. 
So we will deal with the issues of want in our society, a country which is caring, which ensures that there's no excessive exploitation of the people, but also we don't just want to be crumbling here uh, for, for, for the, the, the smaller piece of bread. You see, when people are just, with the problem we have here, everybody wants this piece of cake. But nobody is talking about how to grow this cake. They all more concerned about how to eat it. Eat it. And people, people are cutting each other with the knives here. Talk about the Nobody is talking about how to make the cake bigger. Us here in Azimio, we are talking about growing the cake. Make it bigger so everybody can have something to eat. To see you to hapa, at your way, the Ulipula Jana, Leo Sisikio Hukula, Ulala Jam, everybody must have a square meal on a daily basis. And it can be done if we agree that we will work together very hard to grow this cake. And if we grow this cake, everybody will be happy. All our workers will be happy. Because everybody will be, know they have got a shelter. Nobody is living without a, a shelter. Uh, and if you go and look at those workers in, in uh, uh, Singapore, in Malaysia, even in Korea, uh, and so on, look at how they have been able to transform their country. South Korea was equivalent to Kenya in 1963, economically. The GDP of South Korea and Kenya was the same. The population of South Korea and Kenya was the same. The level of literacy was the same. The per capita income was the same. Major economic indicators, Korea and Kenya, the same. Now, 58 years down the road, Korea's economy is 50 times bigger than that of Kenya. 50 times bigger than that of Kenya. When I was Minister for Roads, I went to Korea to ask for a loan to buy construction equipment. They gave me 50 million shillings uh, dollars loan. And I got the equipment from there. The excavators, the graders, the compactors, the tippers, all those major road moving machinery I got from South Korea to here. I took them to various districts in the country. They are all manufactured in South Korea. Samsung, you have it here, Samsung. LG, Hyundai, Daewoo, are all manufactured in South Korea. Here you're still struggling to manufacture a needle. So we must think out of the box as a country. We must compare ourselves, benchmark ourselves with other countries and ask what did they get right, right which we got wrong in Kenya. If we do that, then we'll be able to change our country. If we don't, another 50 years down the road, you'll still be here, 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 here. Talking about ignorance, poverty, and disease. I just want us to begin a new journey from the 9th of August this year. And when we start, we will be const constantly consulting. But we begin by actually putting the structures in place. And you will see after 100 days, 100 days of Baba's government, we will show you exactly what Baba government is going to do in the next five years. Asante ni sana mungu wabariki. Sorry, before we move to the next session, His Excellency the Prime Minister, it's always a tradition uh, 
After all those nice speeches, assurances, and comfort that when you assume the leadership, you will give priority to workers. And also the good speeches by those distinguished guests that uh, accompanied you uh, allow us to have uh, Honorable Roba Duba to give a vote of thanks. Karibu, Roba. parroting outside there is not part of his subject. That just shows you the difference in seriousness of the person in whose hands you want to let your affairs be dealt with. I leave it to you because you have heard it. You have seen him. If he has sense, if he has the energy, if he has the passion for this country. I have followed him for a long time since I was young. In one of his campaigns he said, I don't know that it is 2007 or 2013, there are three things which you must appreciate in me. This was his words. First, for this job to lead this country, I'm able. Bank on that ability to do so. Second, I have the history. You know it. We all know it. He sacrificed his life. He put his life on the line. Who doesn't know? And let me tell you, it should pain you, and it pains me, when the person who has little content walk on the street and say he's a project of somebody, you will tell Raila Amolo Odinga shamelessly and you say he's somebody's project. Surely for God's sake. The gods are looking and they are listening. The gods will punish you. Be careful. Be careful. You know, you must at least talk to your conscience even in the course of campaign. Now you are going to Tunasema where I come from. Hata wakati kiwa ngumu na mnagani. Na huko kwetu kuna vita ya shifta. Unapigwa na shifta, unatroka kabisa. The, the bullets are raining on you. That is the highest moment of a scare in your life. Unasema, hata wakati huo, usijiharie. Kwa sababu, <laughs> ukifanya hivo, people are very good at recording such kind of history. Iyo pali na iyo tare hawata sao. Wanazema, mtoto wako alizaliwa nini? Siku hile nani alijiharia. It will be used as a debt for reference. And I want those who are looking for power now, opposing his candidature as a president. First of all, I consider it, somebody said the other day, it is Nelson Mandela moment. I believe it. If Kenyans are serious people, and I want to beg them, for your own sake and the sake of your country, just look back a little bit. What is all this literature outside there against this candidature? What? What are the contents? We have had it here today in the, in the, process, in the speech of half an hour or one hour. So I want to plead with you and I want to thank you. Have the patience, uh, you are right, Honorable. Continue with the energy that God has given you so that at least we get a test in the course of your life, as you wind up your leadership uh, history, so that we get a test and get a blessing from you. I want to thank you so much, and I want also to thank uh, my brother Francis Atori. Kama si kelele ya huyu muzee, particularly the labor movement, there's nothing there. Nalimuambia also, where I come from, you know the thing a thief is supposed to fear, ni kelele. Ukiona mutu anaiba, atatroka. Attack bunduki. <laughs> Just tell them you are aware. Hey, kuna mutu hapa. And that's what he has been doing. 
He doesn't have any other power. The power to speak for the people and for the country generally. And I told him many times, don't keep quiet. Because you keep quiet, will perish. Kabisa, particularly the labor movement. I want to thank him so much. That persistence, that consistency of points and spirit. Uh, I want to thank you so much, Professor Nyangnyong. He is uh, the altar of, you know, uh, at which the reasoning power in economics and so on is placed for our country. Sometimes people talk on TV for three months. He comes once, appears on national TV, something, and clears all those. <laughs> how he does it, I don't know. But I appreciate how he does it, with facts and figures. My governor, Murid, you are another one. You know, I was in UDF together with him. UDF. He was opposed to positions taken by, you know, so-called the home, the home front. You know? Even today, he is known to take the bull by the horn. This is how you find your place in history. Don't give up. Don't fear. Don't relent. Don't blink. In daily anamnai, because that's what life is. That will be your contribution. I want to thank the general secretaries for having taken this position. And I am sure you will yield these fruits. The other party, when somebody comes to me, compare this literature today we got here, 10 minutes ago, from the right honorable. And compare the talk out there, whose main concern is about something being upside down. God save us. <laughs> if I have room to make a vaccine in Kenya, and it was possible, there is one that we should do. And that is vaccine against accepting lies. If that can happen, <laughs> Kenya will be safe for a long time and many years to come. Thank you so much. God bless you and Mungu Abariki. Asante. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. We wish you all the best. I think with that kind of speech, the Mayale people should see uh, that you deserve that particular position. In fact, when he talked about Sisi Bunduki at Uski, it is true, Honorable uh, Prime Minister. You know where I come from? There was a time, and I know the moment you take over the leadership, you will bring this to a stop. In Baragoy, uh, Your Excellency, for you to sleep at night, you must first hear gunfire. Because if you sleep by Pema, you will still hear gunfire and you will be awoken by the gunfire. So to us, the gunfire is a lullaby kind of. That is in Kenya. We are optimistic. To Konaimani, those of us who are campaigning for you, we are telling people that once you take over the leadership of this country, gunfire will not be lullaby again in that part of the country. Uh, now, uh, all these that uh, we've discussed, the memorandum that uh, our SG took us through, we just did uh, some brief. We want to have a small ceremony so that it is in the public domain. It was not just hot air. This particular document that we all did collectively will now have to hand over, formally hand over, this particular document to His Excellency, the Prime Minister. Please, the media, the media, to pick up my coffee. Come, come. Muketi Chini, media, pige. Muketi Chini, tafadhali. All workers' issues, Kenyan workers' issues are in that document. Come, nine dagas. The first hundred days, we know His Excellency will be implementing part of that document. To begin my coffee. Okay. Now we want to wind up with a photo session. His Excellency, the Prime Minister, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm, I'm advised that uh, it will be done here where we'll all stand behind. You get seated, we stand, all the general secretaries to come, we stand behind, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah.